with the latest Zen news, and here they are. Bangkok hotspot extremely awaits the return of tourists. Bangkok's once bustling Khao San Road has been a shadow of its former self-silence since the arrival of COVID-19 pandemic last year. But business owners are hoping Thailand's reopening to tourism this week will soon restore its buzz. Thailand, one of the Asia-Pacific's most popular tourist destinations, has enforced strict entry curbs during the past 18 months. But from November 1st, vaccinated travelers from more than 60 countries are allowed to visit without having to quarantine. You have been sitting and waiting for tourists. It is not like before, when we didn't have to sit and wait for them. They just arrive and take their seats. But now, we are just sitting around. Before the pandemic, Khao San Road was having with people on weekends and at night, with cheap beer bars, tattoo parlors, street vendors, hostels, and buzzing nightlife drawing budget travelers and tour groups alike. When Reuters visited on Tuesday evening, there were few people at the restaurants and bars, but the street remained quiet, with around 90% of shops closed indefinitely. Khaosan Road is a landmark site in Bangkok for tourists. People from around the world would love to set foot on Khaosan Road. For us business owners, the tourists are our hope. Business along Khaosan Road has been on pause for the past 18 months, according to Prasid Singh Damrong, the president of Khaosan Business Association, with only 10% able to remain open. I think it won't be long for tourists to fill the street again unless there is another COVID-19 outbreak. Authorities said, despite this week's relaxation, some restrictions remain. Restaurants certified by tourism authorities can serve alcohol until 9 p.m., but bars remain closed to Bangkok Metropolitan. South Korea imposes vaccine passports in living with COVID-19 campaign. <laughs> The owner of a daytime discotheque, in Seoul, he was excited and anxious about resuming after a six-month closure that he could barely sleep the night before reopening. I could not sleep well last night. I was worried, but also I was excited because I can run the business again. What I'm worried about is, what if I have to close it again with more confirmed cases? Hong's reopening comes as new rules aimed at moving South Koreans toward living with COVID-19 come into effect with the easing of a range of carbs and the introduction of vaccine passport at high-risk venues such as gyms, saunas, bars, and colatics. The switch of focus comes as more than 75% of the country's population has been fully vaccinated. The first phase of the revised rules is due to last for a month, with plans to scrap all restrictions by February. Among a raft of changes, operating hour curfews and restaurants and cafes were lifted, and outdoor sports events will be allowed to host spectators at 50% of capacity. With the vaccine pass, I feel confident about dealing with customers, and all customers are vaccinated, so they can protect others' health too. But I think we will have to see if this vaccine pass can create a comfortable environment so that people can enjoy leisure more. Up to 100 people can attend musicals or concerts regardless of vaccination status, while gyms will no longer have to limit treadmill speeds or ban playing music with high beats per minute during group exercises. Gyms will also allow people to take showers at their facilities. Visits to high-risk venues such as bars and nightclubs, indoor gyms, saunas and karaoke bars will require proof of vaccination or a negative COVID-19 test results from within 48 hours. While never under lockdown, South Korea has been battling a fourth wave of infections since July, when the government imposed tighter gathering and social distancing restrictions. South Korea reported 1,686 new COVID-19 cases for a total of 366,386 with 2,856 deaths overall. Chinese State Councilor calls for dialogue between China and U.S. Chinese State Councilor and Foreign Minister Wang Yi called for regular communication between China and the United States and urged the U.S. to stay committed to its one China policy rather than saying one thing but doing quite another. Wang made the call while meeting U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken in Italy's capital Rome on the sidelines of the Group of 20 G20 summit.
During the meeting, Wang lodged China's opposition to the wrong foreign policies the U.S. has adopted against China, condemning the country for its small circle diplomacy that has imposed pressure on many small and medium-sized countries with the aim to contain China. Wong stated, the move is against people's interest of both sides, against the aspiration of the international community, and against the development trend of the time. China is clearly opposed to it. Given the 40-year experience of exchanges between China and the U.S. since the established diplomatic ties and the multiple engagements between the two sides in Anchorage, Tianjin and Zurich, the Chinese foreign minister said it has been understood that the two countries must respect each other and treat each other on an equal footing. China and the U.S. gain from cooperation and lose from confrontation, Wang said, urging the two sides to firmly implement the consensus reached by the leaders of the two countries to restart dialogue and avoid confrontation so as to create political condition for exchanges of the next stage. Wang reaffirmed that he is willing to establish regular communication with Blinken and he called on the two sides to exchange views on how to manage differences and properly handle problems in a timely and candid manner so as to dispel misgivings, avoid misjudgment and explore the possibility of cooperation. Viewing the Taiwan question as the most sensitive issue between China and the US, the Chinese foreign minister rejected the US claim of China, changing the status quo, saying it's seriously misleading the international community. The real situation of the Taiwan question is that there is only one China and Taiwan is a part of China, Wong reiterated, warning that mishandling of the issue will cause a huge disruptive and overall effect on the bilateral relations. According to Wong, the past experiences have proved that any decision to change the current situation will seriously damage regional stability and even cause crisis in the region. Wong said, regarding the crux of the recent situation, it is a result of the Taiwan authorities' attempt to breach the One China principle as well as the US support for the Taiwan independence forces. United States President Joe Biden hails progress at COP26. United States President Joe Biden said pledges made over a two-day leaders' summit at the UN Climate Conference were an example of the type of ambition needed in the future. Leaders at the COP26 Global Climate Conference pledged to stop deforestation by the end of the decade and cut emissions of the potent greenhouse gas methane to help slow climate change. The conference aims to keep alive a receding target of capping temperatures at 1.5 degrees Celsius or 2.7 Fahrenheit above pre-industrial levels to avert still greater damage than has already been caused by greenhouse gases. But the fact that China trying to assert understandably Biden chided Chinese President Xi Jinping and Russia's Vladimir Putin for their decision not to attend in person. China said she had not been given an opportunity to deliver a video address and had to send a written response instead. She offered no additional pledges. China was represented in Glasgow by its chief climate negotiator, Xi Zhenghua, who said in remarks to reporters that five years were wasted because Biden's predecessor, Donald Trump, pulled the United States out of the Paris Agreement and it was time to work harder than catch up. You know, uh, his tundra is burning, he's in a circum literally the tundra is burning. He has serious, serious climate problems, and uh, he is uh, mum on the willingness to do anything. Speaking at a news conference, Biden also said that he believed a key moderate Democratic senator, John Manchin, would be there in support of his $1.75 trillion Build Back Better bill. He was also confident that fellow Democrat Terry McAuliffe will be elected governor of the Virginia as voter cast their ballots in what he said will be a tight race. Asked about inflation, Biden attributed higher prices to the pandemic, slowing down the supply chain, and blamed a surge in oil and gas prices on a refusal by OPEC nations to pump more crude. China International Import Expo has witnesses opening up endeavors over past four years. The annual China International Import Expo, with its fourth edition coming in days, has witnessed China's scaling up efforts in opening up and a major platform for facilitating international trade over the past four years. Late in October, the first Jimbo Imports Expo, China Europe freight train carrying more than 460 tons of European goods, arrived in the host city of Shanghai, 
marking the first time for China International Import Expo, exhibits to be sent by the freight train to the municipality. The COVID-19 pandemic has dampened global exhibitors' enthusiasm for the event, with a commercial exhibition area of more than 360,000 square meters. This year's China International Import Expo has attracted a large number of enterprises from more countries than the previous edition, said the organizer. Participants in the event will include both world top 500 industry flagships as well as many SMEs, exhibitors from both developing countries, countries along the Belt and Roads route and the least developed countries. As the world's first national level exhibition dedicated to import, the China International Import Expo has served as a comprehensive platform for international procurement, investment promotion, cultural exchanges and open cooperation. It is now an international public good for the world to share. Danon, a Paris-based multinational food corporate, has participated in all the four China International Import Expo events. The spillover effect of the expo has enabled the company to turn its more than 30 exhibits into products. It has also been encouraged to establish a scientific research center in Shanghai with an investment of 100 million euros and open a factory in East China coastal city of Xingdao. Factory to complete the upgrade and launch products. This is the best demonstration of Chinese speed and shows the continuing improvement of the country's business environment. China is striving to embrace greater openness despite the impact of the pandemic. The country's overall tariff level has dropped from 15.3% at the time of its entry into the World Trade Organization to 7.4% now. Compared with 2017, the import and export clearance time at China's customs was slashed by over 60%. The fourth China International Import Expo is slated to be held offline in Shanghai from November 5 to 10. Preparations have entered home stretch with exhibits mostly in place. Japanese Prime Minister hangs on to control after his party better in election. Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida's ruling coalition will stay in power, but his party suffered step losses in an election exit polls shows the result will significantly weaken Kishida just weeks after taking the job of leading the world's third largest economy. It was not immediately clear of Kishida if Kishida's Liberal Democratic Party would maintain its majority in the powerful lower house of parliament, according to exit polls by public broadcaster NHK, but Kishida's coalition with partner Komito was forecast to maintain control. NHK said the coalition was projected to win 239 to 288 seats in the lower house, more than 233 needed for a majority. The LDP was expected to win between 212 to 255 seats. The vote was test for Kishida, who called the election soon after taking the top post early this month, and for his Liberal Democratic Party, which has been in government, except for brief spells since its formation in 1955. But the party's downfall was its perceived mishandling of the coronavirus pandemic. Kishida, who has struggled to shake off an image that he lacks charisma, has failed to exceed voters with policies to help poorer people while securing a big boost in military spending and taking a harder line on China. One of the most high-profile LDP defeats was a former economic minister and the leader of one of the party's factions, Nobuteru Ishihara, who lost to an opposition candidate in western Tokyo district. Kishida's publicly stated goal had been for the coalition to keep a majority, at least 233 seats, of the 465 in lower house. Before the election, the coalition had two-thirds majority of 305, with the LDP holding 276. The Olympic athletes from around the world sent powerful message to encourage world leaders to take action on climate change. Dear leaders of the world, Olympic athletes from around the world have joined forces to encourage Dear world leaders, leaders to take action on climate change at the COP26 Dear United Nations Climate Talks in Scotland. In a video released by the International Olympic Committee, at least such as tennis player Andy Murray, swimmer Emma McKeon, diver Tom Daly, basketball star Pau Gasol, and marathon runner Eliud Kipchoge likened the challenge of tackling climate change to competing at the Olympics. They said politicians need to show real ambition and courage to secure the future that we all depend on. We delivered. Meeting goals that others believe impossible. Tokyo and the people of Japan delivered. When many thought it impossible. Each game seeks to deliver a lasting legacy. But how do we pass on that legacy if there isn't a safe and healthy planet to experience it? 
heat, humidity and extreme weather conditions mean many of our sports are already under threat. And sport is just one part of a much greater global picture. We did our utmost this summer. And we know that when we strive to achieve our best, others come with us. Now, it's your chance to deliver. This is the race we need to win. And the speed of the race is determined by each of the participants in it. At COP26, the Olympics of Climate Summit, we need you to COP26 comes a day after G20 big economists failed to commit to a 2050 deadline for halting net carbon emissions, a mark widely cited as a condition for preventing the most extreme global warming. Instead, their talks in Rome only recognized the key relevance of halting net emissions by all around mid-century, set no timetable for phasing out coal at home and water dump promises to cut emissions of methane and other greenhouse gas. Many of those leaders took to the stage in Glasgow to defend their records and in some cases make new pledges at the start of the two weeks of negotiations that conference host Britain's is billing as make or break. Well, thank you for watching everyone. Stay safe, stay healthy and enjoy your weekend.